our lesson for today we are going to look at chemistry 1501 we are still busy with examination preparation the topic for today is stoichiometric calculation we'll be focusing on limiting reagent excess reagent theoretical percentage yield this is lesson 101 let us start in this lesson video we will be explaining each and every detail and each and every step so it's very important that you watch this lesson video before you attempt to answer the worksheet of examination preparation that you just received so in this lesson video we are going to focus on these four concepts which is limiting reagent access reagent uh, theoretical yield percentage yield We'll be looking at how to calculate those using their equations we are going to compile notes so that you understand how to tackle each and every question so we are not going to start with the notes what i'm going to do we'll be focusing on our one example and then throughout the example we'll be compiling notes as we are doing the examples so let us look at our first example for this lesson video. The first question says, write the balanced equation for the reaction that occurs when ion 2 chloride is mixed with sodium phosphate, forming ion 2 phosphate and sodium chloride. So this will be the first question. And then the second question it says if, but let us focus on one question at a time. So now we are required to write a balanced equation between ion 2 chloride, which it will be, it's ion 2, um, bonding with chlorine will have FeCl2 plus sodium phosphate. Remember that the oxidation number for speed or the charge is 3 minus so we are going to have sodium 3 po4 and then it will form um ion phosphate we should be ion 3 po um for 2 plus sodium chloride which is simply NaCl then from here let us balance the equation on the product side we have three ions so let us introduce three here on the right hand side we only have one so we have three and then let us look at other elements let us look at chlorine since we put it there here we know that we are going to affect chlorine chlorine we have six atoms so on the right hand side we only have one so let us go put six here and then let us look at the the sodium since we put it at six let us look at the sodium on the left hand side which is this one we have three so we can put two here now we can see that we have six sodium now we have tempered with um, phosphorus and oxygen but let us check we have one multiplied by this two phosphorus is satisfied and then we have four multiplied by two which is eight oxygens now let us look at this two multiplied by four is eight so this equation is balanced so it's very important the first thing that we need to do we need a balanced equation so let us start with our notes the first step we need a balanced equation if it's not provided as a balanced equation we need to balance it we cannot do anything without a balanced equation this is our first step let's go to the second question it says if 23 grams of ion 2 chloride reacts with 41 grams of sodium phosphate 
then what is the limiting reagent how much um, chloride sodium chloride can be formed so in this case we are looking at two questions the first thing that we need to do we need to find the limiting reagent then we'll proceed and find how much sodium chloride can be formed before we start calculating the limiting reagent let us try to understand what is a limiting reagent a limiting reagent is a chemical reactant that limits the amount of product that is formed Furthermore, you should know that the limiting reagent gives the smallest yield of product calculated from the reagent available. Then you should also know that this smallest yield of product is called the theoretical yield. Now, you should understand that for the chemical reaction, we are reacting two or more substances. For the chemical reaction to stop, one of the substances will be consumed completely. The moment the other substance or one of the substances is consumed completely, the chemical reaction will stop. Now, that substance which stops the chemical reaction is the substance that we refer as the limiting reagent. And then there's also a substance that, we, that will be left, which is the opposite of limiting reagent. We call it excess reagent. Now, you should know that the amount of production, amount of this or this, it depends on the limiting reagent. It means that the moment the limiting reagent is consumed completely and stops the reaction, the product, the production of products will also stop. So we can see that the production of products depends strongly on the limiting reagent. So in order for you to calculate the quantity of the products we need the quantity of limiting reagent since it's the one that is responsible for the production of the products so in this question right now we are trying to figure out which one is the limiting reagent between the two remember we said that the limiting reagent is a reactant that is consumed completely so we cannot focus on the products for now looking at the question of um, finding the limiting reagent we are going to focus on the two so between the two one of them is a limiting reagent how do we find the limiting, the limiting reagent we are going to use our calculations which we call stoichiometric sto sto calculations now let us start calculating our limiting reagent to make things simple I'll, i always use um, a table a table actually summarize the given data and be simple to work with so the first thing that we need to do we need to calculate the number of moles using this equation for both of our reactants then from here we take the mass of each substance given divide by the molar mass remember the molar mass we don't include the ratio the coefficient we simply look at one <laughs> atom of ion and two atoms of chlorine so we are going to write it like this it's one plus two of chlorine we do the same thing to our second reactant we have three of sodium plus um, one of phosphorus plus i'm running out of space let me write it here four of oxygen from here we refer to the predictable we have 55.85 that is the molar mass of ion and then the molar mass of chlorine is 35.45 then we look at sodium is 22.99 then we look at phosphorus is 30.97 30.97 
then for oxygen it's simply 16.00 then from here we can go ahead and calculate the number of moles this will give us 0 0.1815 mole then this will give us 0 0.2501 number of moles let's generate our nodes now for limiting reagent the first thing that we need to do we need to calculate the number of moles for both of our reactants and then from here let us go to our second step we will come back and update our nodes. Our second step is very important. We are going to use molar ratio. Why do we use molar ratio? It's our choice to test. We can choose any of the two to test the other one. What do we test? We are going to test how much of the substance do we need to react the substance completely so basically if we want to test whether this is our limiting reagent we are going to test how much of this do we need to consume this completely or vice versa our question would be do we have enough of ion chloride to react this completely 41 grams and remember this is chemistry you don't just look at the numbers and say the bigger one will be the excess reagent and then therefore this is the limiting reagent no we should use equal i mean calculations that is the molar ratio calculations you might find that this is actually the limiting reagent though we have a um, bigger mass compared to the other one so it is our choice to choose but normally what i do I test using them all though after the first calculation after testing one substance I'll be able to conclude but I go ahead and calculate the second one but in this case let us test let us start with this now how do we generate the molar ratio equation we are going to see and the one that we are testing is FeCl2 divided by the number of moles of the other substance the other reactant which is Na3PO4 equals to these are the number of moles equals to their ratio Fe is 3 and then sodium phosphate is 2 so you can see the reason why it's very important to write the balanced equation and then from here N F E C L two divided by the number of moles that we have is zero point two five zero one equals to the ratio. And then from here we are going to multiply each and every term by the number causing the fraction. Some would say cross multiply. So we have N FeCl2 equals to 3 over 2 multiplied by this, which is 0 0.2501. We get 0 0.37515, 5, since we have smaller numbers, let me write it the way it is now let us understand this quickly we have two number of moles the first one is this one the second one is this one the first one we used n is equal to m over m the second one we used the molar ratio to find now let us compare the two i said this is the first this is the second this is what we have this is the number of moles needed to consume 
this number of moles completely or the other substance completely. Now the question is, do we have enough or do we have insufficient? We need 0 0.375.5. Do we have enough of this or do we have insufficient? Now we only have 0 0.1815. So you can see that we don't have enough of this. We can generate a conclusion to say if the number of moles of what we have is greater than the number of moles that is needed, this will be the excess reagent. Then if the number of moles of what we have is smaller than the number of moles needed, that particular substance will be the limiting reagent. So in this case, we can see that the needed is greater than the have. So we can conclude that this will be the limiting reagent. We can go ahead and verify that the number of moles we have, it must be greater than the number of moles needed, meaning that we have enough number of moles to react the other substance completely. Let's quickly do that. So N of the one that we are testing over N of the one that we are reacting it with equals to the molar ratio is 2 over 3. Now N, Na3, PO4, divided by uh, what we have, we have this 0 0.1815 equals to 2 over 3. Then we multiply both sides, we are going to get. 2 over 3 multiplied by 0 0.1815 we are going to get 0 0.121 mole so you can see that this is less than this we have enough we need this to react this completely but we can see that we have enough of that more than enough. So this will conclude that this is our excess reagent. So looking at our nodes, after finding the number of moles, we are going to find our limiting reagent using molar ratio. To find the limiting reagent or the excess reagent. But in our case, the question is asking for the limiting reagent. So the limiting reagent is ion chloride. Then furthermore, the question is saying how much of sodium chloride can be formed. Looking, going back to our notes again, to use the molar ratio is not the molar ratio, it's the molar ratio. To use the molar ratio, we are going to, let's quickly say A plus B to form C plus D for the sake of notes. So for the molar ratio to find the limiting reagent, we are going to take A and if you are testing A, it will be A plus B plus the ratio of A over the ratio of B. This is the equation we are going to use to find the limiting reagent, or we can use A N B over N A equals to R B over R A. Then we know that these are the ratios, then these are the number of moles we calculated from this step. Then from here we can conclude. Now to find the by the way, this is the limiting reagent and access. We can access reagent. 
these nodes are also applicable when you want the access reagent now to find the mass or the production of the products what do we need to do let us look at the steps we will come back for the sake of notes so that we'll be able to calculate this now in order to find the production of the products that is our next question we are going to take the molar ratio of the limiting reagent over the, mol uh, the molar ratio of no, I'm sorry, let me rectify this. By the way, it will be the same. The answer will be the same whether you take the one up and then the other one on the numerator or the denominator level. But I would like us to say the one that you are looking for must be on the numerator. Molar ratio of the product over the limiting reagent. The ratio of the product over the ratio of the limiting reagent. This is the equation that we're going to use. So let us find the number of moles of the question set. Let us go back to the question. Or how much of how much sodium chloride can be formed? Sodium chloride, when you look at our equation, you can see that sodium chloride is this. It's one of the products. So in this case, we are looking for sodium chloride. all over the limiting reagent it's FeCl2 then we look at the molar ratio it's 6 is to 3 okay, go ahead to the equation and verify you can see it's 3 and 6 and then from here we are going to substitute NaCl all over the number of moles that we have it's 0 0.1815 so that is the magnitude we're going to substitute 0 0.1815 equals to our molar ratio which is 6 over 3 then from here we multiply both sides by the number cos in the fraction so it will be n NaCl equals to 6 over 3, 0 0.1815. We find that the number of moles of sodium chloride is 0 0.363 mole. So this is the number of moles of sodium chloride. Now looking at the question, it says how much sodium chloride can be formed well we are not given whether we should calculate in grams or in number of moles but let us convert to grams quickly so so if the number of moles is 0 0.363 when we convert to back to mass and grams we are going to use this equation we are looking for this m so when you cross multiply it will be m is equals to number of moles multiplied by the molar mass then m number of moles is 0 0.363 then the mass in grams we have sodium plus chlorine which is 22.99 plus 35.45 Our mass in grams will be between 1.21 grams. So this is the mass produced when we react those quantities of the given substances. Let us go to our next question. Okay, before we continue, let us update our notes quickly. production we are going to calculate the molar ratio between c or d 
depends which one you're looking for and the limiting reagent equals to the ratio of C or D over the ratio of limiting reagent. Then if we require the production in grams, and then we're going to use this equation, making M the subject of the formula, we're going to have something like this. Then we find the mass. Our next question says, how much of the excess reagent remains when this reaction has gone completion? Has gone to completion. So we are looking for the excess reagent, the substance which is left, the quantity. Now to calculate, okay, before we go there, we have concluded that this is our excess reagent. We have this, and then we needed this, and then we can see that we have enough of that. Now to calculate the magnitude of the content that is left after completion, we are going to use this particular equation. Number of moles left in the container or in the reaction, it's equals to number of moles that we had minus number of moles that is needed. So if we have concluded using this site and then we didn't calculate further by verifying using this, it means that to answer this question, we we'll start by doing this first so that we can get this needed. This is what we have, this is what we need so it means that we are simply going to take the difference of the two, which will be 0 0.2501 minus 0 0.121. Let me quickly transfer it to this page. So from here, we get that 0 0.1291 mole of our excess reagent is left. Then if we are looking for this in mass in grams, M will be equal to N multiplied by molar mass. M is equal to 0 0.1291. Remember that our excess reagent is Na3PO4. So meaning that we have 3 of sodium plus 1 of phosphorus. plus uh, four of oxygen. Then looking at the predict table, we have our magnitudes there. We find that the mass in grams is 21.16 grams. This is the mass of the content the content that is left in the container of the chemical reaction so going back to our notes we can update now if we are looking for the excess reagent I mean the number of moles of the excess reagent or the mass of the excess reagent left. We are going to take the number of moles left is equal to the number of moles that we had minus the number of moles that is needed. Then after finding number of moles left, we are going to use our equation then the mass in grams is number of moles left multiplied by the molar mass then we find the mass in grams our next question it says if 16.1 grams of sodium chloride are formed in the reaction what is the percent 
what is the percent yield of this reaction we continue with our notes to find the percent yield we are going to use this equation this percent yield it's equals to the actual yield over theoretical yield multiplied by 100 to convert to percent. This yield must be in grams and also theoretical must be in grams. Now let us go back to this question. This mass is the mass that is produced. We call this the theoretical yield. If the question says calculate the theoretical yield is the same as the, the question that is asked to calculate the mass of sodium chloride produced. So this is the same as the theoretical yield. We are given the actual yield as 16.1. This is the actual yield. So to find the percentage yield, we are going to use this equation. Now, you should know that if it happens that somehow you tend to forget this equation, just know that in most cases, it's a smaller number dividing a bigger number. So we have 16.1 divided by, let me go back and check quickly. Find that our mass is 21.21. .21. multiply by 100 to give us in percent this will give us 75.91 percent or we can say 76 percent so this is the theoretical yield now this is how we calculate these concepts that is actual yield theoretical yield Actually, yield in most cases were given, but you should expect that sometimes you'll be expected or asked to calculate the actual yield when you're given the, uh, the, the theoretical yield and then the percentage. Remember that an equation can be asked in many ways. Might be given the percentage, the theoretical yield, you must calculate the actual yield and go up. That is how we calculate the limiting reagent, the excess reagent, how to calculate the contents that are left in after the completion of the chemical reaction. This is basically how we calculate. This lesson video is meant to give you the details, teach you. Goal for this is to know how to calculate limiting, access, actual, theoretical, percentage yield. Now there is a pre-discussion activity. I will display it in shortly. Just make sure that you do it before we go through the worksheet remember this is examination preparation we are preparing for the examination just make sure that you are ready and prepared for today's discussion that's it for this lesson video this is wahula sg thank you very much